This is Mr. Barron. We're going to be talking about titrations, pH and pKa, and what they all have to do with one another. So first we're going to talk about a weak acid. Uh, weak acids, we've had a number of them in this class that we've been working with. We've been working with hydrofluoric acid, and then of course we've been working with acetic acid. That's another one that we've worked with quite a bit, uh, both of which are weak acids. The generalized form for both of these, of course, is HA. And A would be, of course, the anion that would become the conjugate base when it dissociates. So an example of this, of course, would be HA plus H2O in equilibrium with H3O plus and A minus. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to label this as our weak acid. And this is our conjugate base. But we often just refer to it as the base when we talk about buffers. So what I'm going to do is just remind us about buffers. Buffers are created when you have an initial amount of your weak acid and an initial amount of your conjugate base. And that allows this equilibrium to react with anything that's acidic or basic and relatively maintain the concentration of hydronium in your solution, thus maintaining the pH of your solution. So how do you create a buffer if you just have a weak acid? So say I just have this weak acid, and they could, it could be either, a, say, hydrofluoric acid or acetic acid. How do I make a buffer? Well, I need to start with an amount of uh, the conjugate base to it. So say I have 0.2 uh, uh, moles of my HA, and say I react it with 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, when I write sodium hydroxide, I kind of want to ignore this Na here. The reason I want to ignore the Na is because it's a spectator ion. So really what I'm showing here with this 0.1 is not just the NaOH. I just want to show OH minus because it's really hydroxide that's reacting. Well, what happens when HA reacts with hydroxide? Let's go ahead and write out the equation for it. So it's HA plus OH minus, and then it's in equilibrium with H2O and A minus. So if I initially start off with 0.2 moles of this, 0.1 moles of this, and it reacts to completion, this is my initial amount, and then my final amount I'm going to put below it. I'm going to eventually end up with no hydroxide, because it's the limiting reactant and totally reacts with my weak acid, which is HA. And then what do I have left of HA? Probably 0.1 moles of it. And then how much do I make of either of these two? 0.1 moles and 0.1 moles, oops, 0.1 moles of this as well. And the initial amount for both of these, of course, would have been zero. So what I've done is I've taken 0.2 moles of my weak acid, reacted it with a strong base, and then I've produced an equal amount of a weak acid and its conjugate base. And that's the definition of a buffer, because if I add an, a strong base to this system, the base will react with the HA, and if I add a strong acid, it'll react with the A minus. So it basically allows the equilibrium system to maintain pH. So this is an example of a weak acid reacting with a strong base. There's something interesting that happens when we actually measure the pH when we have this reaction happen. And I'm going to show this through a PowerPoint right now. So let me move to the PowerPoint. All right, so we're going to be doing titrations in this class. The titrations we do in this class are going to be a couple of different varieties. Uh, the first one is with a pH meter. We're going to study how pH changes as you add a base to an acid. Now notice this one is a strong base with a strong acid. It's very different when you add a strong base to a weak acid because you create that buffered system as I showed in the earlier example. So uh, one of the words that we really need to be comfortable with is the word equivalence point. The word equivalence point is not the same as end point. End point is just when the color changes. The equivalence point is when you reach the situation I showed you on this piece of paper. That after you've added the, well, actually, I haven't shown it on this paper quite clearly, but imagine you reached a, a point where you have the same number of moles of this as you have moles of this. So actually, I, do, I have reached this situation. We're going to talk about how the amounts change throughout the duration of a titration. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at different titration curves. Each of these colors represent a different type of titration. 
The bottom red line shows what happens when you add, and we can see on the x-axis what we're changing is a strong base, the volume of a strong base. We're adding more and more and more base, so of course the pH is going to go up because pH is going to be on our, our y-axis right here. So for a strong acid, you keep adding the strong uh, base to the strong acid, and then all of a sudden, see how the pH jumps all the way up here? That's what we call an unbuffered solution. The change in pH is dramatic. Look, it jumps almost instantaneously, like with very little volume of base. It goes from here all the way up to there, really quick. And that's because the system's unbuffered. So the weaker the acid, the slower the change. So you can see that the Ka is getting smaller and smaller and smaller for each of these titrations. The smaller Ka is, the weaker the acid. So the weaker the acid, the more gradual and the more buffered of a system you have. So let's go ahead and take a look at two terms so that we can talk about different titrations. We have weak acid. We're going to use this for our weak acid, and this for conjugate base. Sometimes it's referred to as the salt, and this for hydroxide. All right, so this is a weak acid strong base titration. We're going to look at a couple parts of it. We're going to look at this part. We're going to look at that part and that part. Again, this is the equivalence point. That's where the um, moles of your weak acid are equal to the moles of your base. Then we're going to take a look at that portion as well. All right, so the weak acid before strong base is added. So this is the Arrhenius definition of weak acid. This is what exists in your solution before you start dropping the strong base on it. And that would be right at this point right here. Uh, there's a number of calculations we've practiced in this class where we know that the HA is weakly ionizing into H plus and A minus. But it's such a small amount, we're not even going to label it. And then these, of course, are our equilibrium expressions, our Ka expressions to show uh, that expression. All right, now let's start adding the strong base to the weak acid. That's this portion right here. So again, here's the equations that we can use to describe it. But here's the important thing that happens at this point. At this point, as you add the sodium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide is no longer present at the bottom of your flask or your beaker, wherever you're doing the titration. Some of the weak acid has now changed into your conjugate base. Once you have the weak acid and the conjugate base, both within the beaker or the flask, you now have a buffered system. And that's why as you keep adding more and more base, see how the pH doesn't change very much? This is a buffered system right here. And that's because you have both the weak acid and you have the conjugate base present. So that way as you add base, it reacts with more and more and more of that. All right, so this is what we call a buffer. Now the end point is reached somewhere around, now the end point can be the same as the equivalence point. The end point of course is when the color changes, but I like to call it the equivalence point. And at equivalence, the moles of your weak acid are equal to the moles of base that have been added. And e also equal to the moles of salt that have formed, the salt of the strong base and the weak acid. So remember, concentration we talk about is always in moles per liter. And then we have these equations here. I'd like you to pause the podcast and take a look at them carefully. I'd also like you to go back and look at the other ones from the other slides as well. But at this point, we now have the same amount, oops, the same amount of the weak acid has been added, and now we have it in, as the conjugate base. We've run out of the weak acid. We now have the base. So the moles that we've added of the hydroxide are equal to the starting amount of the HA and is now equal to the present amount of the conjugate base. It is critical that you understand that, again, I'm going to say it again, that at this point right here, the moles of the base you have added are equal to the moles of the weak acid that were originally present and is now equal to the current amount of moles of the conjugate base. All right, beyond the end point, we're going to this part right here. Again, you're going to want to take a look at this graph to understand the concept. The reason why the pH jumps right here is because we no longer have our buffer. We've run out of the weak acid and the conjugate base once we've reached the equivalence point. They no longer have both present. So as you add sodium hydroxide, that hydroxide sits around and, of course, increases the pH of your system. So now that the strong base is present, let's go through the equations. Oop, make sure you go through the equations and understand them. Okay, let's go forward. Finally, a special point. This is the point that we're going to need to understand for the lab work we do. We can actually use Ka to identify unknown acids, and that's part of the lab we'll be doing. So let's take a look at this region right here once again. We're going to look at the equation for a buffer. So the equation for a buffer, 
can be this can be simplified into the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. And then again at this point we have some of our weak asset, we have some of our conjugate base. They're in equal amounts right here. Well, when the moles of the weak acid are equal to the moles of the conjugate base, what happens is your pH is equal to your pKa. I don't actually like how it's written right here. I'm going to go back to my piece of paper where I was writing. Don't forget what the henderson hasselbalch equation, and that's the equation I want you to use to understand this. This is the henderson hasselbalch So when you've reached a point where you have equal amounts of your weak acid in your conjugate base, then this divided by this becomes one, and the log of one is zero. So when you have, let's label this, moles of your acid equal to your moles of base, this is no longer a factor in your equation. And again, this is your conjugate base and this is your acid, just like I showed in the PowerPoint. So your pH is equal to your pKa at that point. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right, so looking at that special point here, when you have an equal amount of both of those, then you have your pH equal to your pKa. So wherever your pH meter, whatever your pH meter is reading, which is halfway to the equivalence point, and if the endpoint is the same as the equivalence point, you could be saying endpoint as well, then whatever your pH reading is halfway to this point is also your pKa. And Ka can be used to identify what your weak acid actually is because every weak acid has its own Ka. Again, let's review the graph here of weak acid with a strong base and strong acid with a strong base. Notice the weak acid is significantly more buffered. The change from here to here is a lot less than the change of here to there. And that's because as you add a strong base to your weak acid, you create that buffered system that exists right here. If you have any other questions, please let me know.